Hi everyone, I'm Glenn Flaherty from Board Games and Bourbon. Right now I'm going to talk to you about Super Tall, which is a new game coming out by Button Shy, and it is by the creator of New Bedford and Nantucket, which are two really cool games. In this game, what you are doing is you're trying to be the most successful builder of skyscrapers. It's a two to three person game, it plays in about 20 minutes, and it's quite clever, I must say. The cards in it look like there's a lot of information, but it's really not that bad. Um, basically, you're stacking these cards, and uh, each uh, from the least expensive to the most expensive, uh, like a bottom floor, this card's worth four. Bottom floor would be like a laundromat worth zero. You're building towards a penthouse that's worth five. And the top card, your penthouse or whatever it might be, is gonna have a scoring condition on it and that scores your pile. And when you get these cards, you're basically uh, either building placing one card on top of each other like let's say like that so you see all the floors lined up okay there's a zero card that should go on bottom uh you're building cards up you're going to use them for their scoring opportunities use them for an ability in which case the card gets shoveled back in or there's a discard pile called a sky uh, city hall and that negates scoring for everyone in the game so it is quite clever i quite enjoyed it it doesn't take up a lot of space and i thought it was pretty engaging had a lot of interaction too so let me talk about it while i play it Okay, so we're going to talk about the setup of Super Tall and how it plays. Now, the cards themselves, uh, they don't really matter what cards you have when you start, but I do want to give you just a primer of what we're looking at here. So on each of the cards, and remember your goal is to build uh, the most you know expensive skyscrapers, right? It'd be a developer, I guess is what you'd call it. Now, the cards do have a lot of data on it, but once you start playing it, it's very easy to understand. Um, this is just art, you know, so when you stack it, that it looks like a skyscraper. This is a fun title, the Executive Switch. Tweet. But what is important is this symbol here. This symbol here says it's a business, a little stock market sign. It says the value of this floor is four. And again, you want the numbers to be ascending. As you go up, you know, you want it to either be like one, two, three, four, or you can stack floors of similar numbers like one, one, then two, two, then three, three. Uh, you have the scoring condition in the game. Should that be the top floor? And in, in this one in particular, the symbols and the iconography really help. It basically means if there's a, a business floor in your plan, you get a point. If there's an entertainment floor, right, the little theatrical symbol in blue, isn't that clever? You get three. But the interesting thing here is that the cards, not only between buildings in your little area, but the cards of everyone else and perhaps City Hall also affect each other. So this says if you're adjacent to a building uh, that has a green on top, you're going to lose a point, okay? Now, if you don't want to use this as a scoring card on top of your uh, building, you can also use it for an ability, in which case you say what the ability is, and then you put the card back into a pile that's available for you to draw from. And this just says you can return any top floor, okay, to the uh, to the draw decks. And that's not just yours as anyone's, okay? It could be, uh, you know, Joe Blow to the left, Mary Sue Robbins on the right, whatever, okay? Okay, so what do you do here? Now, uh, two and three players have minimal setup, but they're both very easy. And what you're going to do is, uh, I guess what we'll do here is a two-player uh, setup. Okay, in a two-player setup, you basically, and I'm just kind of demonstrating what's happening, you're going to have like these three areas that will build your structures, okay? And in the center, you're going to have a city hall that will ultimately serve as your discard pile. Now you're not going to start with these three cards here, but I want you to visualize uh, where your buildings will be. These three buildings are considered adjacent. These two buildings in city hall are considered adjacent and then similar for the opponent, okay? But the buildings here are not considered adjacent to here in this kind of setup. The reason that's important is because some powers will affect adjacent buildings. However, La da 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 da. In a, uh, what is it, a three person game, the setup is more like this, where these are the building structures and city halls in the center. So in this setup, player one, player two, player three, these buildings are adjacent. These buildings are adjacent. These buildings are adjacent, you know, and now everything's really interconnected. So there's a lot of implications of when to play cards. Okay, so let's actually play something and show you how to set it up and get it done. Okay, so we're, we're just going to do kind of like a, uh, we'll do it with a two-player setup. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put a city card down. Now, the reason you kind of put this out as city hall, which will serve as where you're going to put your city hall cards, your discarded cards, is whatever is face up here will negate that kind of card in the future. So as long as this is face up, this is saying entertainment 
it doesn't score for any building you have in the game, okay? But someone could replace it. They could use it to swap floors. They could do anything they want with City Hall, okay? It's, a, it's essentially a building that's in play. Now, you put that there. Everyone's going to get one starting card for their little community that you're trying to build. And then you're going to have essentially three piles to draw from. Let's do this here. You know, equally split, we shall so say. Okay, so they have these little buildings they're trying to do. You have City Hall in the center. Then I'm going to draw this card. Uh, this one here says that it's a luxury condo. It's a pretty high number, so I don't want to necessarily put this on my ground floor. Now, in a two-player game, I do have the option to have three buildings total. This was a pretty bad draw. I have a five, a uh, value five building on the floor. That's pretty donkey. Over here, I have a two floor, which gives me a lot more room to grow. The cards go from zero to five. So on this four, it says here, if I want to make this my top floor right now, I can, uh, I'll get two points uh, for every floor and minus two for every business I next to. Well, I don't, and then it also says I can return any top floor. Well, there's really not, you know, too much to, to worry about there. I'll just place it there and pretend that we're starting our building. Over here, I grab, holy cow, that's a five. That's a top one. It says I may rearrange floors in any tower and two points per card. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start building this building here. Now, because I've already layered it as such, the scoring condition on this card says for every floor in this tower, I'm going to get two points each. So that's already two. I'm not next to a business, so I don't lose two. Okay, ah, so the game keeps going. And you can see how it kind of plays out. All right, a one. This player over here drew a one. One is really good to start with as a low floor. I'm going to put it there. And eventually what's going to happen is, and now I got a zero. Well, I can't really do anything with a zero. It doesn't even have an ability. That is definitely going to have to be my ground floor of that back building. Now in this uh, scenario, these are considered adjacent. These are considered adjacent. These three are adjacent. And these three are adjacent. But these two buildings over here not adjacent and so it just keeps going like this and what you're going to discover is you'll get a card and let's give an example here it says an ability move a bottom floor to an adjacent tower okay well i'm going to use that power let's say okay so i'm going to stick this card in the bottom of a deck and i'm going to move my two into what did that say into an adjacent tower um, look, I'll, I'll put it there because that's an adjacent tower, essentially. You can consider that an adjacent tower. So that would go on the bottom or something like that, okay? Um, now, all these cards have different, you know, abilities. What does this one say here? This says you may swap any two floors. And when that says swap any two floors, it doesn't mean just from yours. That's any two floors. That could be the center. That could be your opponent. It doesn't matter. So there's a lot of calculating what you want to do in this one. Move a bottom floor to an adjacent tower again, okay? So I could do that between between two buildings in my area or whatnot. So as the game goes on and when you're getting to the last of the 18 cards, it starts getting really tight. You think you're ahead, but then that last card comes out and totally blows you out of the water. My favorite thing to do is to just drop a card right in the center and that takes away that scoring opportunity from your opponent. And then when it's time to score, basically what you do is you figure out all these scores. The most expensive tower also gets a bonus two points and then that's the end of it. It's actually quite easy, you know, I would prefer this game over something like a Flip City or uh, anything like that. In fact, when I play this game, there's such good decisions on it, and it does take about 20 minutes to play because you are pondering what you're doing. It's thought-provoking, which I really like. I would expect to see this game in a box in a store. You know, the great thing about uh, Button Shy is that they're always very affordable, and they're these small packages that you can take with you anywhere. But, I mean, it, and I know that on shelves and stores, the sizes of boxes are there to create an impression of worth and shelf presence, they call it. I mean, this is as worthy as, uh, you know, so many games I see out there, more worthy than many games I see out there. I'm really, really enjoying this, and I'm glad I've had the opportunity to spend time with it. So Super Tall is yet another one um, by Button Shy that I really, really dig. Uh, please check them out. I think you'll be really satisfied. I got to say, the, the, the graphics on it are intuitive. The art on it is very clear. Uh, the cards are really easy to interact with. Um, and I think there's just a lot of good stuff going on here. You know, I have a prototype quality, so I can't, uh, you know, talk about what the final uh, touch and feel and tactile ability will be of it. But so far, very, very pleased. Okay, thanks, everyone. That's super tall.